Hey there, this is Eric with RegFox, back again with another video tutorial. And this one, I'm going to walk you through everything there is to know about the Reg Options field. This is probably the most important field in all of RegFox. And it should be the primary way in which you organize, categorize, and charge for your event. It's gonna be the most important option. If it's not on your page, hit the plus icon where you want it to appear, and it's right there. The Reg Options field is gonna have a lot of advanced functionality that's not found in, say, a multiple choice field. So our reports are also going to recognize this field as a very unique option. So use this to organize and to categorize all your registrants. So individual, corporate, VIP, one day, two day, however you want to organize your registrants, use the Reg Options field. So let me walk you through the settings in here, and there's a lot of great things in here that I'm happy to walk you through how they all work. So the first two options, the label and the required, pretty self-explanatory, just determines what you want to describe it as. If it's a required choice, we would recommend it's required. The next one is the financial options on, which you can see hides the price. 99% of people use this with the price on. And then the first one to talk through is the limit capacity. And this is different than the limited supply of this individual choice, so option one. Now we could have a limit supply of option one, and this could be limited to 250 people. And maybe consider this as the individual registration. But let's say that you have a ballroom or venue that has a restriction for total registrants or attendees. And let's say that number is 1,000 people. So you can set this to 1,000, and then that 1,000 is shared across all the rest of these choices. So the 250 be limited to just this option, but the remaining would share across that. So this one would fill up first, and then all the rest would share against that 1,000. So that is how you can limit your total event attendance using the reg options while also limiting maybe like a VIP option or advanced option, early option, something like that. You can limit the supply individually at the choice level. So I'll turn those both off and keep walking through it. Next is the group size requirements. And so this is a unique feature that will require a number of registrants to uh, complete registration when that choice is selected. So option one will leave off, but let's say uh, option two, this is a golf tournament. And so we can say this is the doubles registration option and the group size requirement is two. And let's do a foursome for it as well. And so what this is going to do, let's set that to four, is going to require those number of sets of registrants for each one. So if I hit save and preview, we can see how this works. So option one, no problem. I can just step through and I can add another person as I go through. But when I hit the doubles registration, what happens is it's going to open up registrant one right here, and then it's gonna open up registrant two here as well. So pretty cool on how that works. And then it does the same thing for the foursome. So I turn that option on, registrant one, two, three, and four. And so if you need to enforce a really strict number of registrants, you can do it that way using the group size requirements. Pretty cool. So let's go back here. Let's go ahead and turn that off and keep moving. Uh, the visible option, if you are maybe wanting to have an exclusive hidden field, or maybe you decide that after a while you wanna hide an option, you can use this toggle to turn it on or off. And so by default, that'll be turned on for all of them. The name here, again, just whatever you wanna have in here. So, so you can have it be an individual registration option. And maybe this one, we'll call this a corporate registration. And maybe we'll call this one VIP. Then on each one of these, you can also add a custom description. I'm gonna paste in some sample text here. Just copy this to each one. And then let's give this also a price. Let's say the individual is 500, corporate is 1,000, VIP is 1,500. And so you could put any descriptions, uh, any of the formatting you want as far as those choices in there. And when we look at it, you can see it's nice and organized with those options. You also can choose when you wanna set a default. So let's say when the page loads, I don't want them to choose an option, I want to default it to a choice. No problem, when you set that, and if I hit save and preview, I go down here and that one is pre-selected. So that's a way you can have an option 
be defaulted at first, or if it's not on, someone will have to make a choice from all the rest of them. Going back here, let's go back, let's turn that off. The deposits, this is a way that you can capture an upfront amount and a final balance later. So this is really popular in camps. So let's say that there is a, call it maybe a 25% deposit required to register at the time of registration, like right now, and then a final balance that is due, let's go deep into the future, on April 30. And you can have it as a percentage or it can be a flat amount. So let me open up this one and let's change this to a dollar amount. And let's go that the uh, amount is say $500 with the balance due at the end of the month as well. All right, that looks good. So let me show you what that looks like. I'll hit save and preview. And so now what you can see on here is I choose individual registration and I'm given the option to pay in full or deposit payment of a partial amount. And the remaining balance will automatically be charged on a future date. I have another demo where I talk about making progress payments and how all that works, but a really simple option here is this partial payment and final payment later. And so a great option for people who wanna hold their spot for a low amount and then make the final payment later. All right, let's go back here, look at a few more options. I'm gonna turn these all off as well. All right, now the limited supply, I briefly touched on that, but that's how you can enable a limit for each one of these. So let's say there's 100 for this one. I'll do a separate demo on how the whole waitlist feature works, but basically when the supply is exhausted, people can still join if this is enabled and have to put a card on file. So I'll do a separate demo for that for you to watch, but I'll allow you to restrict the selections on each one here. Then on the advanced options, there are a few options here that might be helpful for you. So one of them is show remaining supply. And this might be helpful for when you want to encourage people to move quickly to register. So let's say there is 25 available. And when this remaining supply is enabled, what it's going to do is it's going to show on that choice that there are 25 left. So any one that has a restriction of a capacity that's set when that toggle is turned on to show it, it is going to show those there. Pretty cool. Going back to some of the other advanced options, there's this enable tax deductible values here. And this is really for charities and nonprofits. So how this works, and this is really neat to RegFox, is that we are able to recognize when there's a charitable contribution amount that is tax deductible by the IRS that is included in the price of registration. So if I enable this, you'll see that tax deductible value opens up here. And so the IRS will basically say, hey, there is a market value for attending your event and anything above that is recognized as a charitable deduction. So let's say the VIP option really is worth $500 on a market value. But if you pay $1,500, that means there is a $1,000 charitable deduction. So if that's the case for this one, I'm just making this up, so be sure to consult your tax professionals, but let's say there is a, on the $1,500 purchase price, 500 of it is not deductible, but $1,000 is. That value will show on the confirmation page, an email receipt, and even roll up into our year-end statements where you can send out charitable statements to the attendees. Again, mostly and only for nonprofits who can issue those kinds of charitable deductions. So that is what that charitable uh, tax deductible value does. It allows you to recognize a charitable value associated with a given option, and you can add them to each one of the choices there. Last here is the show description on confirmation. And what this will do is it'll take this description and maybe there are instructions, benefits, and perks it will place it in the confirmation page and also email. And so as people want to double check what their registration comes with, that is a great feature to have, to have that description also included on the confirmation pages as well. So when that's enabled, whatever you put in here will show on the confirmation page and email, remind people maybe of instructions, perks, benefits, and so forth. So a great option there. Well, that's it. I've covered a lot in the Reg Options field. I'm gonna do additional demos on some of those things you saw. Hopefully this was helpful for you. Again, be sure to check out more of our demos so we go deeper into the RegFox platform. Thanks so much for watching and we'll catch you on the next demo.